today we're going to talk about the seven worst legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms with their relic buffs what's going on guys cheers so almost a year ago i made a video talking about the six worst legendary commanders in the game and it was no surprise to anybody that a handful of those commanders were gold key commanders and now lilith has released the museum with the relic system and a lot of those commanders did actually get buffs so i figured it's time to go back and reevaluate the worst commanders in the game and also throw in another one as well just for good measure just a quick reminder we're close to 30,000 subscribers so if you've enjoyed some of my videos i would really appreciate it if you click the sub button and in exchange i'm going to give you guys good luck on your next gold key opening here you go you, you can have it take that you're welcome without further ado we're going to jump right into the list now this list is somewhat in order meaning the number seven on the list i think is better than the number one on the list because remember we're talking about the number one worst commander in the legendary tier but you could definitely make an argument as to which of these commanders should go in which places depending on you know what kvk you're in and depending on what command you're focusing on for your account so just keep that in mind this is a lot of my opinion but I do think that statistically they are the worst starting with number seven we have Moctezuma now this is a commander that was number six on my last list and what's interesting is that Moctezuma was very new into the game when I made that video and I said hey you know we need more testing to see but I think this is probably one of the worst commanders in the game and it turns out that I was right uh people don't really use Moctezuma you know mega whales who got him from mightiest governor because everything else is already maxed might use him to like rally objectives in kvk season of conquest but other than that there's really nothing that has come of Moctezuma since then I don't think I've ever seen one in the open field he's just not a commander that is worth it when we're in a system where you can pick which commander you get and each time they introduce new commanders it's just better than Moctezuma they just released Suleiman who I honestly you know I'm not super impressed with but is definitely much better than Moctezuma so you've got plenty of options in the leadership uh mightiest governor commander field to where Moctezuma is pretty much never going to be picked at this point now one thing that did happen to Moctezuma that makes him slightly better than he was a year ago is the fact that he does deal extra damage to a target that is uh, affected by a health debuff yeah, Jaguar warrior his third skill this is interesting because back then there was only two commanders that applied a health debuff uh now we have another one now we have Gilgamesh who is the best health debuff in the game and so now there's just one more commander in the game that gives you an opportunity to actually use this skill but realistically it, it doesn't move the needle at all for Moctezuma so he still makes the list but the fact that he's number seven means he's doing slightly better than he was last year not because he himself is doing better but because there are new commanders that are doing worse but realistically Moctezuma just was doomed from the beginning I mean he's a leadership peacekeeper it's just nothing too crazy he has a somewhat average direct damage factor only to one target reducing their counterattack damage by 15 percent that's not that significant unless we're talking about somebody with insane counterattack damage like Pakal Harold so you know maybe that's nice the second skill is strictly PVE so you can't even attempt a 5511 or a 5551 with Moctezuma you would have to try your luck to skip this second skill if you wanted to use him in a PVP scenario and realistically why would you anyway so yeah there's just not much to love about Moctezuma but he is only the first commander we're going to talk about today so it only gets worse from here moving on to number six on the list we have Frederick the first now this is interesting because last year he was number four on the list which means he is performing much better now than he was then at least amongst his peers of the worst legendary commanders in the game and the only reason that he has been bumped up on this list and is a little bit better than last year is because of his relic now the thing with Frederick and the reason that he's on this list is yes he's got decent single target damage factor and honestly that's where he shines right he in the early game like you can punch pretty hard in kvk1 maybe even kvk2 if you've gotten really lucky in gold keys and you've got a ton of you know uh, skills on him but besides that that's pretty much it he has a 10 percent chance for a healing factor that has a cooldown which is just like why uh his expertise adds to that punchy factor but the, the problem with frederick is that he has no sustainability he is a glass cannon right he doesn't have march speed to support 
support his glass cannon -ness. uh and so there's really nothing you can do yes you're going to deal a ton of damage to one target but once you're surrounded it's game over for frederick even with that healing factor it doesn't matter okay this isn't even uh you know when he's attacked it's his own normal attacks so if he's surrounded it doesn't increase the probability that this happens so there's just he's just so easy to take down uh that even if he is punching really hard at one target it doesn't really matter because you're going to lose that exchange as soon as you get swarmed and the only thing that makes frederick slightly better is the fact that he did get a nice buff from the museum which is nice he got a 25 percent attack buff and a 10 percent skill damage taken reduction now that does provide slightly more tankiness than he had before with the skill damage taken reduction you're going to get hit by a ton of skill damage in the open fields aoe has still been the meta for the open field with newer aoe commanders in the game than there were last year so this is really nice the attack buff is really nice because it will help with his punchiness so it does help with what he's already good at and prior to this he's had no base stats literally zero his entire skill kit gives him zero stats at all which is insane so now he at least has a 25 percent attack buff which is nice um it's you know it, it's not preferable for him you know we would have liked to see something like health or defense by 25 percent or even 15 percent defense 15 percent health i think that would have been really nice where the hell even is he holy sh but yeah other than that there's nothing that we really like about frederick he gets a 10 percent damage bonus only for cities not even for flags or anything else it's it's just not good he's just not a good commander um five five one one in the very early game if you're lucky with gold keys and you know there you go um is it worth unlocking his relic i don't think so uh, i really like like i said he's just he's gonna get swarmed down and like it is what it is you, you know if you get swarmed it's like the worst trades of your life at least with somebody like frederick so uh number six on the list it gets worse from here but frederick is pretty bad and you could probably make a argument to make him worse than some of the other commanders that we talk about here on the list but the fact that he's just so punchy is you know maybe you have a use for him now that his relic gives him stats moving on to number five on the list we have Hannibal Barca now this is a big upgrade for Barca which sounds really bad because we're talking about the worst commanders in the game but last time Hannibal Barca was number two on the list so this is a huge movement up on the list for him and again just like Frederick it's because of his relic now the reason that Hannibal Barca is so bad is because his act active skill has a really poor damage factor now he does have a nice defense reduction and a damage reduction for five seconds which is a very long time for a debuff in rise of kingdoms his conquering skill only works for city rallies and it's just to heal your own troops in a rally there's just not that much to love about him yes he gets a nice 15 percent damage bonus uh, outside of alliance territory which is fine but he's just not dealing that much damage and he has no stats he has no attack no defense no health no anything and that's the problem with Hannibal Barca on top of the fact that he costs money you literally have to be such a high VIP level just to make him useful and he's only useful in the early game like kvk1 so who's going to be wailing that much to get that far into the vip system and then buy the vip bundles for him just use him for kvk1 it's just really not that useful you may see him sometimes in canyon only if he's expertise because that's when you get this fan shaped area with the 300 damage factor which is decent oh my god these verification rewards dude these this isn't preventing botting well if it's not preventing botting don't you know that but anyway like frederick barca does get 25 percent troop attack which is nice this doesn't depend on troop type by the way so these him and frederick you can use any troops and they're going to get 25 percent extra attack which is nice that makes them a very versatile secondary to a primary commander that probably will focus on a troop type so that's good and you know the problem is that these relics are only usable in season of conquest which is far after these commanders are relevant right and so these buffs just aren't enough to make them usable the five percent normal attack damage uh reduction is nice so you know we do get some stats on him so yes you know you may use him as a secondary possibly to like ethelfled or something like that in the late game as like a third or fourth backup march or a debuffing march or something like that um you know it is what it is the the again the relic giving him 25 percent attack is the reason that he moved up in this list the reason that he's still worse than frederick even though you may argue that he's better than frederick is because of how you unlock him 
Frederick you can get for free Hannibal Barker you cannot get for free uh Frederick you can invest universals into Hannibal Barker you cannot invest universals into so it's not like you can just unlock him and then finish him from there no you have to buy all of the VIP bundles assuming you're even a high enough level which is why um Barka is just a worse commander he's just worse because less players are even going to get to use him uh compared to Frederick so it is what it is um again Barka you know maybe if he got a really nice buff which is confusing right because Minamoto got a really nice buff uh, and he's also a VIP commander so you would think that they would want to e give uh, Barka equally as good of a buff to incentivize people buying him to, but unfortunately there's just so much wrong with Barka that there was just no way for them to really fix him with with this relic system so it is what it is Hannibal Barka don't spend your money on him he's just not worth it moving on to number four on the list we have Ragnar Lodbrok now this is a huge problem because Ragnar is super cool he's badass there was a huge marketing push behind him his design is epic he's the he's a Viking right when you think of Viking you think of oh my god we're gonna like pillage and just destroy a village right but unfortunately Ragnar was he came into the game he was you know dead on arrival basically uh the problem with Ragnar is you know he he yes he's got 20 percent attack so unlike Caesar and unlike Barca and unlike Frederick he is a leadership gold key commander with some stats so that is good but the problem with Ragnar is his active skill is really lackluster the expertise is nice because it's for five seconds and 40 percent increased damage is nice 20 percent reduced damage taken is nice right that's good stuff but you have to expertise him to get there uh and really the only other thing that you've got here because his active skill isn't it's not that great it's not that great right when we look at somebody like Caesar his active skill is for five seconds out of the gate and then it's slightly improved later here it starts at four seconds so right away you know the damage bonus uh is the same as as Caesar it's just for shorter right so you know it is what it is I understand we're getting a damage taken uh, reduction but you know Caesar's getting stats for five seconds where you know so it, it, you know I think they're very interchangeable but Ragnar you know the only good thing about him is that he's sort of a pseudo counter to Richard in kvk1 because he's reducing the healing effects but realistically you've got Esong, you've got El Cid you know you've got archers to counter Richard right that's the thing so did did they need a healing effect counter in kvk1 I don't know I haven't played kvk k1 in a long time so maybe that was a big problem if it was then here we go we've got the solution but other than that complete garbage right complete garbage on Ragnar's kit um his conquering skill still only affects city attacks like what is this trash right his expertise again is the only really nice thing about him because it makes that active skill good and his relic just isn't enough to save him right the troop defense is really nice he needed that troop defense and the normal attack damage reduction of 10 percent is also nice it adds a little bit more tankiness to him but there's just not synergy for Ragnar in the late game there's just like really nothing you can do with him that's the problem right that's the problem with Ragnar so yes the universal troop defense is nice right it's nice you can put him as a secondary it's a little bit tankiness here which is cool if he's expertise even better but realistically I just don't see it I don't see it and the fact that he came into the game so late already made it so that way all the old players uh, weren't gonna use him right just immediately you have an entire demographic of your game that will never touch him right because he's not nearly good enough to invest universals into and unlike somebody like Caesar for example who you've been getting for free for two years now or three years now from gold keys uh Ragnar comes into the play and you know reduces the probability of getting any single gold key commander from a gold key but also it reduces his own probability of being pulled so you know most players who've been playing for a long time myself included like they don't even have that many sculptures of Ragnar and they never will because he's just the probability of getting a gold key commander is so low because they keep putting new commanders in there like since he's come out I've only got him at five four one one and I've got 19 sculptures you know I'm, I'm halfway to my next skill basically but he's just unusable he's, he's just unusable outside of maybe kvk1 like I said and some random third fourth secondary backup march right like that that's really all it is uh and so Ragnar not a commander you should be investing in uh not worth it late game barely worth it kvk1 I, I don't know I don't really I, I don't find use for him and I just I you know I put the other two um Barca and Frederick above him because 
I think Frederick punches really, really nice. Barco's got a little bit of AOE, and, and that's really it, right? Uh, at the end of the day, all three of those commanders are complete trash. Uh, maybe you can make the argument that with the relic and the expertise, Ragnar is better than them maybe you can make that argument but really we're talking about the bottom of the barrel at this point right we're talking about just literal trash okay and and really none of them are going to be used in season of conquest which is the only time the relics are usable anyway so like it doesn't even really matter coming in at number three we have julius caesar now this is crazy okay this is crazy caesar was number three on my list last time um and he hasn't moved right he hasn't moved they gave him a relic and it didn't do what we needed it to do okay the problem with caesar is literally everything okay the only way he gets stats is temporarily from his active skill it's a five second stat boost of 40 percent we've got tons of other legendary commanders who get 40 60 percent of stats permanently permanently okay so like it there's just no point okay there's there's no point he's trash same damage bonus we see on ragnar okay it's 30 percent great uh it's it's maybe it's an extra second right until Ragnar's expertise so that's great but other than that you know he's yeah he's a little bit tanky here on his second skill and the rest of his kit is a wash it's a wash you're not gonna rally a city maybe kvk1 or pre kvk if you're a mega whale who maxes him I'm sorry if you do that because you wasted your time and money but it is what it is and then his expertise you get a teeny teeny tiny damage factor a tiny 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 damage factor and that's it 400 damage factor to a single target total it's ridiculous it's total trash right complete trash expertise and then when we take a look at uh at his at his relic you know all damage 10 percent great except he's not dealing damage so like who cares like you're you know you, you can't you multiply something by 1.1 it's, it's it's if it's already a low number it's a low number like you're not going to get any benefit out of that the march speed is nice right because he is very slow when we're talking about julius caesar um but realistically you know this doesn't move the needle at all for julius caesar i mean you could have you could have probably tripled these numbers 30 percent increased damage 30 percent march speed and and maybe people would would test him out and and like consider using him uh but other than that there's just there's just nothing like he's he's just he's hot garbage deserves the top three maybe even deserves number two uh and i would also say that you know him and ragnar and barca i think they're all sort of interchangeable right these are all terrible commanders but the thing is that you know ragnar has a decent relic frederick has a decent relic uh caesar doesn't have a decent relic he, he just doesn't it's just not enough it's not even close to enough for a commander that was already as bad or worse than those commanders so i don't know what they were thinking um you know that it's just this doesn't do anything for caesar um it's almost like they just don't want people to use julius caesar which is weird to me because he's such a famous uh commander like in history actually um but it is what it is julius caesar top three because he's complete trash and you should never say otherwise the only time that you would ever see a caesar in the open field is early game free to play players maybe would use him as a secondary commander to somebody like alex or richard or something like that to be just a little bit tanky get some universal stuff behind those commanders but that's only as a last ditch effort because they have nothing else uh and that's it right that's that's really it um maybe you'll see him in like you know an early arc of osiris as a garrison with richard or something but you're not okay you're you're just you're not that's like an emergency last last ditch garrison so it's just caesar's trash he's he's always been trash and their buff to him is horrible and the fact that maybe some some players could have spent money to get this you like think about that some players potentially bought the battle pass and the bundle for the coins here just to get the caesar buff and it, it's trash right and i hope that hasn't happened i hope everybody understands that this was not worth it but you know people who don't know what they're doing maybe they did that and that's that's heartbreaking to think about i don't know about you but i want caesar to be good i really do i want him to be good and he's not so that's what sucks but anyway the number two worst legendary commander in the game is Lu Bu. Now, Lu Bu used to be number, I think, five on the list last time, right? And that was because he was relatively new, right, compared to some of the other commanders on this list. And also, he had a role, okay? So he does deal AoE damage factor, which is not something that we can say about everybody else on this list, right? So that is a benefit that Lu Bu has. Um, but really the only reason that people ever used Lu Bu at all 
was for the 40 percent defense reduction which is good except for the fact that nevsky is in the game now and nevsky deals a bigger troop defense reduction if the target is being swarmed so there's just no reason to use lubu anymore uh and on top of that the other commanders that we've talked about in this video julius caesar ragnar barca Frederick they all got buffs with the relic and Lubu did not so he suffers the same problem as them me being a leadership commander conquering and a terrible kit right just just not good at all 10 percent damage only for cities like we continue to see 15 percent attack not enough right even if it was 20 or 25 percent it wouldn't be enough he does pop off if you're lucky with a huge attack buff for for five uh three seconds but it's not great you're never gonna use him with Dao Chan and there's just like wh what are we doing here right his aoe i mentioned this in the last video his aoe is like the same or worse it's worse than sun tzu because sun tzu hit five his five targets that's an epic commander and on top of that he gains rage like sun tzu's a literal better commander than lubu uh he's literally better than everyone on this list but you know it, it, lubu specifically when we're talking about aoe like this aoe is a joke it's a literal joke it's trash uh and again everybody else on this list got a relic uh and Lubu did not except for Moctezuma but Moctezuma I would say is obviously better than everyone we've talked about here so far although not by much but regardless Lubu is trash and also he's unobtainable from what I've seen now um since my previous video they've not made Lubu available um from what I can see at least not in my version of the game maybe he's been available in like the Chinese version of the game or some other region or you know something like that uh possibly but they have not put him back in the game and that's probably because their rights or, or whatever ran out for dynasty warriors or obviously it hasn't run out because he's still in the game but to you know to continue having him in the game as something people can spend money on um they haven't done that and they haven't put him in gold keys so i don't know if there's some sort of like he he's just not something they're ever going to do again um but that's fine by me because he's 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 trash and i wouldn't want new players to be misled thinking that he's good because you know they download rise of kingdoms they're playing it for the first time they get lubu somehow and they're like oh my god i love dynasty wars here uh dynasty warriors they invest in him uh and then he's just booty okay so it's good that people can't get him he's trash don't eat like just there's nothing the one thing he was good at was the defense and that's not something people use him for anymore and gilgamesh reduces uh health by almost as much and that's just a, it's just a better debuff from a meta commander so sorry lubu but you're you're uh you're up there with the worst of them he's not the worst though because the worst commander is still charlemagne it's still oh my god dude i cannot believe that charlemagne is a commander that you get for winning a kvk like winning a kvk sometimes costs you a lot of money like you, you can spend a lot of money in the kvk when it comes to like fate changers and you know speed ups and gems and all the stuff that you need to effectively fight in a kvk especially it being your first kvk in rise of kingdoms and you're like excited to play the game you're like oh my god like yes i get to you know, this is my first big event everyone talks about how great kvk is and that's one of the reasons people still play this game uh, and th and this is your reward the worst commander in the game he's actual just hot garbage he's literal trash terrible damage factor right literally it's a vanilla damage factor and it's not even a high number <laughs> like if if you're gonna have a 1400 damage factor i better see it in a 700 rage requirement or 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 like something else a debuff a buff something right and there's nothing there's nothing here okay it's it's all bad it's all bad okay you get a 10 percent chance of a shield the shield's not good like th there's just like it's fine but it's not the best shield in the game right there's nothing that he does that's good he's leadership which is not min maxing on anything right and you know his stats only come from rallying he has no stats otherwise it's terrible it's still skill damage increase is is worse than other commanders who have a permanent skill damage increase uh and this is only for like it, it, it's only good when attacking cities like overall he's just terrible he's he's so bad he's so bad and when we take a look at his relic uh which was supposedly you know an opportunity for them to to buff him we see 30 percent troop attack which on face value is like oh my god that's a lot of attack right that's like a whole skills worth of attack on top of the fact that it increases his active skill damage factor all the way up to 1700 but guess what guys uh you know we have commanders like Yi Song Ye who deal that AoE circular like it's, it's it's so bad that you know Charlemagne there was just nothing they could do he was dead on arrival and besides completely reworking his kit entirely I just don't think there's anything they can do to make Charlemagne good I, I just don't like this this had to be 
you know 40 percent health and a thousand damage factor and even then i don't think anybody would still use him but maybe they'd bat an eye but at the end of the day charlemagne his kit is trash his relic is trash and you know i don't know i mean do i care not really like obviously you know someone's got to be the worst commander in the game and you know let's at least make it an obvious choice uh, and the fact that you know maybe a lot of players who lose kvk1 hey you didn't miss out on anything okay charlemagne total doo-doo not good at all uh he hasn't moved he's still the worst commander in the game almost a year later with a relic buff and that's embarrassing anyway guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so all the rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel again i'm getting real close to 30,000. so thank you all to who have clicked that button and i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below who do you think is the worst commander in the game do you think that you know maybe frederick is worse than caesar or, or i would love to hear from you guys down below who do you think needs a buff the most on this list? I would love to know what you think. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.